Hi, my name is Jake, and I am a bookish drummer. So my favorite authors of all time all have great attributes. Sanderson is terrific at creating interesting worlds and unique and creative magic systems. Stephen King is great at writing horror with great characters that you quickly become attached to. George R. R. Martin, in my opinion, is simply great at everything. World building, plot, character work, you name it, he's great at everything. But you know what all three of these authors have in common? They're terrible at writing romance. Since it's Valentine's Day, I figured I'd play into the algorithm a little bit here and discuss and talk about romance novels. The problem is though, like I've just shown you, many of my favorite authors of all time are terrible, quite terrible at writing good romance. Most of the time when my favorite authors try to weave romance into the story, it either simply falls flat it's very cringeworthy, or it's just rather uncomfortable to read. Take Brandon Sanderson, for example. He's obviously a very prolific and fantastic fantasy author who a lot of people have read and a lot of people admire his works. In The Final Empire, which is the first book in the original Mistborn trilogy, this book is great. It has a great plot, interesting magic system, a great female protagonist. But in books two and three, Vin is romantically involved with another character, and I won't say who it is for spoiler reasons, but she's romantically involved with the character, and whenever Sanderson decides to write any kind of romantic scenes involving the two, or like any kind of dialogue between the two that's romance heavy, it's very cringeworthy, and I don't like it, and I believe a lot of people don't like it also. Uh, it's just, even though this is a great book, and then books two and three have a lot of great qualities, the romance is not one of them. And then there's also Stormlight Archive, which is my second favorite series of all time, and even I can admit that the romance between uh, particularly one of these couples, but then also another one, it's just not good, it's very cringeworthy, and all the other aspects of this book are great. The world building is super unique and intricate and very well done. The characters themselves are very well rounded and very fun to read about, but the romance is very weak and I don't like it. And yeah. And of course there's Stephen King, one of my favorite authors of all time. I clearly enjoy talking about his books. I make lots of Stephen King content here on the channel. And like I said, there's a lot of things Stephen King does well, especially his character work. A lot of people come to his works because of his great and outstanding characters. But it doesn't matter how prolific the man is, he has not been able to write a good romance yet and probably never will. And ironically, when Stephen King was asked what book he was the most proud of or like what was his most favorite book that he wrote, a lot of people would probably suspect something like It or The Stand or maybe even something like the Dark Tower series. But no, he chose Lisey's Story, which is essentially the closest thing to a romance novel that Stephen King will ever write. And in my opinion, it's very subpar. I was very disappointed with it. I, in fact, DNF'd this several times before, before I could even finish it. And in large part, it's due to the very cringy romance. And I, I just don't think King is very good at writing romance. The characters themselves in this book, Lisey and Scott, they are actually pretty good characters. But whenever they're together and they have their, they have this weird like lovey-dovey made up language bullcrap. It's so cringeworthy and I'm just like, Ugh, I don't, I don't like reading this. So yeah, this not, not a good King book. And it's very ironic that this is King's favorite book that he wrote. And it's like very romance heavy. And you're just like, dude, wh what? <laughs> That's kind of the buzzword for this video. If you couldn't tell cringe, like a lot of my favorite authors just write very cringeworthy romance scenes where you're just like, why did you include this and in such vivid detail? Like, I don't need this in my book right now. 
And for the most part, when Stephen King does write books and he does weave a little bit of romance, it's usually very little. And even if it's bad, I can kind of forgive it because of the, re the rest of the book is amazing or really entertaining or really creepy. But some of the times, like with Lizzie's story and then more recently with 112263, these are very romance heavy books. And I just, I'm not a fan of Stephen King romance. Uh, so yeah, I think he should stick to his other great attributes, not romance. And of course, my favorite author of all time, George R. R. Martin, like I said, many great attributes. He's, he's such a great writer and he does a lot of things terrifically. Like I said, it, it, in A Song of Ice and Fire, my all time favorite series, great world building, great character work, great intrigue, great mysteries, just all around a fantastic series, but not very good romance. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the times when he's writing sex scenes in this series, you're, you're not supposed to enjoy it, right? Because a lot of the time it's either not mutual or it's between characters who should definitely not be having sex with each other or just even if it's supposed to be romantic, it's not. And it is, like I said, very cringeworthy and just very graphically written and just very uncomfortable like like I said all, a lot of my favorite authors just are just flat out terrible writing good romance scenes and just romance in general and yeah but does that ultimately mean that I don't like romance or that I don't enjoy romance probably a few years ago I would have said no I don't enjoy that in my books but very recently last year I started reading Taylor Jenkins Reid, who quickly became one of my favorite authors of all time. And that all started with Daisy Jones in the Six, which I've talked about a lot on my channel. This is a top 10, maybe even a top five favorite book of for me all time. And it, for me, like the classic rock premise, I really fell in love with and I fell in love with the characters. There's a bit of romance in here, but it's not at the forefront. Like, I love this because I'm a huge music buff, especially classic rock. So that's why I tended to like this book. But then when I started to dive deep into her other books, I was hesitant because I was like, uh, maybe Daisy Jones will be like a one-hit wonder for me, for, ta for Taylor Jenkins Reid, just because it's so musically involved and that's kind of what I like. So when I picked up Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I was a little skeptical of, of whether or not I would even like it, but I ended up loving it, even though it's essentially about a woman talking about seven of her romantic involvements. And I, I really enjoyed it because it was a good story and it had great dialogue. It had great characters. And Taylor Jenkins Reid is just a master of utilizing humor and drama and blending the two just perfectly. And yeah, it was a very good book. And I also gave it five stars. And then I've since read two of her uh, earlier books, Maybe in Another Life and One True Loves. And these are definitely romance heavy. Whereas the other two, you could argue like, oh, they're not romance, they're historical fiction. Well, these are just, just romance. And they were really well done. And again, I think Taylor Jenkins Reid is a fantastic character writer. And she blends humor and drama so perfectly well together that I can't help but enjoy these stories that happen to be very romantically involved. Her romance is very good. So it's not that I'm opposed to reading romance. It's just that I rarely come across good romance in my stories. And I, I'm, I'm one to believe that anything can be done well. Like you can enjoy something even if it's like completely outside of your comfort zone, as long as it's done well and in a fresh way. And definitely Taylor Jenkins Reid is a perfect example of that because like I've said, a lot of the books that I tend to read are very good for very different reasons other than romance. Like, like epic fantasy just has a lot of great world building and horror just creates a very creepy, creepy atmosphere and you know, like a thriller will be very pulse pounding, 
plot, and those are the those are the type of books that I tend to lean towards. Not not very much romance, but you know Taylor Jenkins Reid, like I said, is a perfect example of something that's completely outside of my comfort zone that I really enjoyed because it was done very well. So even though my three favorite authors of all time, George R. R. Martin, Stephen King, Brandon Sanderson, really don't write good romance. In fact, I would go as, as far as to say they write terrible romance. I, I will enjoy romance if it's done well and in a very interesting and uh, believable and just in a fresh way. And her books are definitely like that. So I'm not opposed to romance, but my favorite authors definitely don't write good romance. <laughs> okay, what did you guys think of this video? I know it's kind of a little different than what I would normally talk about, but it's Valentine's Day, so let's get the algorithm kicking in here. Did you guys agree with me on any of these authors? Do you disagree with me? Also, let me know what your favorite books are that have a good romance in them. What are some of your favorite authors that tend to write good romance? And also, if you have any recommendations for me, books that have good romance in them, especially fantasy, because fantasy is probably the genre that I've come across this problem a lot, especially with male authors, right? Like George R. R. Martin, Brandon Sanderson, and then, you know, a few others. They, they typically don't write good romance, so... If there is a good fantasy series that actually has good romance, you can recommend that to me. As long as it's not friggin' Akatar. No Akatar, please. No Akatar. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and the Book Astronomer Discord. And if you'd like to further support me financially, go check out my Patreon page and see what that's all about. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.